Hey, it's Katrina Sawa here, the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach with jumpstartyourbiznow.com. And I want to talk to you over the next couple weeks about the eight secrets to a consistent revenue generating business. And on each video, I'm going to talk about each one of the secrets because I could be here for three hours <laughs> talking all about the eight secrets to the um, to consistent money making business. It's actually one of my signature talks that I give uh, to live groups. So I'd love to speak to your group. These are my little handout that I pass out uh, with the eight secrets in it. You can see it now. You can stop the video and take a snapshot if you want to of all eight. But my goal is to come on and do a series of videos over the next couple of weeks uh, on my YouTube and then in my blog as well. So, um, and then who knows, we might share them out on social media too. But uh, so, okay. So first of all, why eight secrets? Where did I come up with this, right? I mean, there's 462 things that we need to do as a business owner and entrepreneur these, these days. There's so many hats we have to wear uh, from operations manager to hiring manager to a uh, trainer to marketing and uh, sales and research and development. We have to be a techie and web designer these days. Uh, well, we have to come up with product and service uh, ideas. We have to be the idea generator. We need to be the CEO and the face of the business a lot of times, um, right? It's just crazy how much stuff we actually need to do in our business to become more successful. Now, if you're wondering where I came from, you know, I started out, I've been in sales and marketing all my life since I was 16 and got my very first job uh, scooping ice cream and at thrifties. And for the, those of you who know thrifties, you know, comment below. Yeah. It was really good. And um, I would always try to sell people up from one scoop to two or three, right? So I was always thinking like, how can I get people to buy more? <laughs> like when I worked in retail at a clothing store in the mall, when I was in the high school, I would like, okay, you, you, you're you buying these jeans. How about a shirt to go with it? What about a necklace? How about some earrings and, you know, accessories? And then, uh, you know, it's just, when I was in, um, one of my last jobs was advertising sales at the local newspaper. Thank goodness I got out of that. Uh, 20 years ago, right? And uh, so I would knock on doors of small business owners in my local area and I would try to help them uh, by, you know, grow their business by running ads in the paper. And I would show them how to design their ad and how long they needed to do it and what to suggest for call to action and things like that. So I'm really good with evaluating where someone's at and what they need to get more business. And that's how I really found the love of small business owners was uh, doing that advertising sales because there would it would break my heart that they would still go out of business because there's so many other things that they didn't know how to do in their business. They didn't know how to run a successful business. They A lot of them knew what they were selling and knew their product or service, but they didn't get the whole big picture, right? So in my last 19 years of doing business coaching, so I went straight into business and marketing coaching. Now I do so many different things. We have a publishing company. We have a techie services company. Um, but primarily, most people come to me for business coaching and advice on how to get started growing their business, how to build the foundation, how to also get fast cash and, and where to really spend their time, how to focus, because there's so many different things you can do in your business these days with social media and the internet and, you know, good Lord, all the way out to TikTok and Clubhouse. I mean, how do you know what to spend your time on, right? To get, that's really going to bring the clients in or the customers in. So I love to help people focus on the two or three things that they really need to spend their time on in order to move the needle as fast and, and efficiently and more consistently as possible. So over the last 19 years, I looked back a few years ago, like what really was it that made me more successful and makes my clients more successful? A lot of my friends and peers who are doing really well in business also, many of which I knew 15, 18 years ago when we first met and we've grown up in business together. We're all kind of doing similar, I mean, we're not doing similar businesses, but these are the eight things that I've identified that we all have in common in one way or another and that we focus on. So the first thing, and these aren't in necessarily the order of importance, mind you, these eight things, but the first thing is to know your big picture vision, uh, your goals, and to believe it's possible. Now that could be broken into like two different things. Know your vision and your goals and where you wanna go, 
and believe it's possible, right? So that some people talk all just about believing it's possible in your mindset and keeping your mind positive. Like it's all the one of the first, in fact, one of the things I talk about is becoming an author, right? And the very first book I wrote a chapter in this book here, Power and Soul with Allie Brown way back in 2006, it was entitled, It Will All Work Out in the End. That was the chapter I wrote. That was what came out of me at the time to give advice to entrepreneurs um, on having more power and soul in their business. And it was, it'll all work out in the end. And little did I know, at the, I didn't know at the time that that was my true motto. I really do believe to the depth of my soul that I have what it takes to build a business. I've always thought that. Now I didn't always know what to do, but I always believed in myself and that I would, that I had the ability, I just needed to learn what to do and how to do it along the way. And so I've hired all kinds of people along the way, right? To show me how and what to do and to get me thinking bigger and things like that. But I never doubt, I'm like, of course I've doubted myself along the way, but I really did have conviction and a lot of belief in myself that like, I didn't have a plan B. I didn't say, well, if this entrepreneur thing doesn't work out, I'm going to go back and get a job because I'm really good in sales. I never thought that. I knew it, but I didn't have a plan, which I think has made me 200 times more successful than many entrepreneurs because a lot of times they're half in and half out. And they're half in thinking, well, if it works, great. And if it doesn't, I'll go over here. So they're constantly thinking about that plan B or plan C. Or they have people in their lives, and this could be you too, and this is really step number eight. But, <laughs> but if you have people in your lives telling you, hey, you got like six months to figure this out. If you don't make money, then you got to go back and get a job. That's not having someone believe in yourself. That's not having a supportive significant other or friend or family member, frankly. And, and you know, I had to get divorced in 2005 because my first husband, my starter husband, did not believe like I did. He didn't believe that it was going to work out. He was too scared to trust me and trust and have faith that it was all gonna work itself out in that roller coaster of cash flow in those first two years. And so I had to let him go because he was holding me back from really going forward with what I wanted and what I believed could happen and could be true. I just needed to keep taking those steps to figuring it out. So I I didn't see, I couldn't, I couldn't see where I would be 20 years from now in this business. I had no, I, no way of knowing that vision. I had a vision of being an entrepreneur and working for myself and working from home and uh, helping clients and helping business owners create better businesses for themselves. That was pretty much my vision. My vision was, and I had goals of certain money I wanted to make, you know, in corporate when I was my previous jobs, I think the most I'd ever made one year was around 80,000 or something like that. Um, I didn't have a job that had a hundred and something thousand dollars a year. I never experienced that. Neither did my parents, mind you. So my parents had never made more than a hundred thousand a year, if even 70 or 80, frankly. So I never grew up with that mindset that it was possible. I'm sure, I, I mean, I knew people did it, but it wasn't something that was on my goal to, when I first started my business, I didn't have a goal of making $100,000. I just wanted to make a good living and support myself and help people and have fun, right? That was really my initial vision and goals. And then it's just grown over time to now my goal is like a half a million a year and in revenue, uh, serving lots of clients in many different ways. I now have multiple divisions of my company. I have a much bigger vision uh, for my family and my self time and uh, all kinds of things. You know, now I have, a, now that I have a second husband, my, my good, not good, my first husband was good too. He just wasn't supportive. My, my current husband is amazing because he's an entrepreneur also. So we're much more like-minded and that doesn't mean you can't have a significant other that's an employee and you're an entrepreneur. It's just two totally different mindsets. So you really have to work on that, that belief and that mindset and that um, spirit of growth in your as an entrepreneur. So 
that's what I would tell you in the first step to the eight secrets to consistent money making business is really knowing your big picture vision, your goals, and believing it's possible. And so if you've got that dialed in and you just keep evolving it along the way, you're going to be awesome. You're going to be in really good hands with yourself uh, and you're going to do well, but you can't let that the negative negativity fester. And I would say also that I think a lot of people don't think big enough. So think bigger, think bigger with your revenues, think bigger with your, your mission, your vision, uh, what you really want to accomplish, the goals that you have for yourself, stretch yourself. I, I like to say, you know, I'm a realistic yet stretch uh, type of a coach. So I want people to stretch their goals and stretch their thinking and stretch yourself, but I'm also a realist. And so I know what's, what's humanly possible to create based on where you are too. So I'm not going to, I had a coach one time that I wanted to make a hundred thousand the year that I was working with him. And he said, that's too small. You need to make millions. And so he made me like suggested, I changed my goal to millions. And I said, okay, $5 million. Right. But nothing in my body believed that I could do $5 million when I hadn't even done a hundred thousand yet in a year. So that's what I'm talking about. Don't go too crazy with your goal because your body won't believe it. Your body and your mind, subconscious mind will have a really hard time believing something that is so unrealistic in like year one or whatever year you're looking at doing or whatever kind of a jump that would be, right? So that's where I, what I mean by stretch yet realistic uh, when you set your goals. So there you go, Katrina Sawa. Um, you're, you can visit my website at jumpstartyourbiznow.com forward slash free trainings. And you'll, hope, you'll find all kinds of trainings on that page, actually, how to be a speaker or author or jumpstart your business uh, resources. Uh, the need number worksheet might be good to help you think of a bigger goal. If you do the need number worksheet, you can have a call with me, whatever you want to do, just go to forward slash free trainings on the website and we'll see you on the next video where you can get step number two.